It's a good thing coopers and sharp shinned hawks themselves know which species they are. Because from our point of view, telling them apart is tricky at best. I'll explain the differences in the second of these two movies. But first, let me show you what they have in common, which is almost everything. When you're in the woods or on a suburban lawn with mature trees, you might see a Cooper's or a sharp-shinned hawk sitting on a branch, inspecting his surroundings. If the breast has brown and cream vertical streaks, it's an immature. Another sign of immatures, in most hawks as a matter of fact, is yellow eyes. A breast with orange and cream horizontal barring and orange or red eyes indicates a mature hawk. I seem to see more immatures than adults, and I wonder if that's an indication of short lifespan for these birds. They can live 12 years in the wild, but few come anywhere close to that. As this sharp-shinned hawk sits there, he's probably looking for mice or squirrels because the birds have either already fled or have frozen in place, hoping not to be noticed. If you have lots of bird feeders, you'll have these hawks. And you can be sure they're not there for the seeds. When the Coopers and Sharpies go after birds, ambush is their game. The agile, reckless bird races low to the ground, then up and over an obstruction in hopes of taking a flock by surprise. He didn't manage to surprise these birds, but if you're standing there when he succeeds at it, you won't even see this much of the attack. You probably won't register the hawk's approach. What you're most likely to see is an explosion of feathers followed by the hawk killing the starling or robin or even a bird as large as a duck. If the victim sees anything at all before those talons rip into it, it's a split-second look into laser eyes. Once he has his prey, he squeezes repeatedly until it's dead. Falcons kill prey by biting it, but squeezing is safer. And both these hawks face such danger with every chase that they prefer to end the encounters without taking any more chances. It's understandable if you feel sorry for the birds he catches, but you might also want to spare a little pity for this predator who risks injury or even death when he attacks. The danger he confronts is trees. Yes, they are camouflage and he needs them. But as this daredevil hurtles among them, he's bound to hit branches. He has no predators to speak of. But swerving among the boughs like Mad Max is so perilous that in a way, he's his own worst enemy. A study of 300 Cooper's Hawk skeletons showed that 23% of them had healed over fractures in the bones of the chest. Well, fearlessness is in their DNA. So you just have to respect these devil-may-care creatures, no matter how foolhardy they are. The second movie tackles a thorny issue, how to tell the nearly identical Coopers and sharp shinned hawks apart. They're almost like the two halves of one face. Birders often see what had to have been either a Cooper's or a sharp-shinned hawk. But the two species are so similar that without a good close look, observers often end up walking away writing Cooper's slash Sharpie in their notebooks. So not only is it okay for you to admit you don't know in that kind of situation, it's inevitable. In fact, most North American birders would probably agree 
that telling these two species apart is the most challenging distinction they face. Still, you might like to be able to tell the difference some of the time. The problem is that despite 10 or 12 differences, no one field mark is always, or even usually, a dependable clue. For example, a Cooper's is the size of a crow, 15 to 20 inches. A Sharpie's the size of a Blue Jay, 10 to 14 inches. But seriously, you're not going to be seeing them side by side, right? And judging the relative size of a bird at any distance is tricky, especially when you consider that a female Sharpie is bigger than the male and almost as big as a male Cooper's. Only an inch of difference. Many birders consider size the least reliable diagnostic feature. A more dependable field mark, if you can get a good look at it, is the edge of the tail. The Cooper's tail is an arc with rounded edges. The Sharpie's tail is more of a flat line with square edges and a notch in the middle. Now that's all well and good, except that the Sharpie's tail doesn't always look ruler straight across. And if the Cooper's tail is folded, it can look very much like a folded Sharpie tail. Two more differences are the shape of the head and the thickness of legs. A Sharpie's head is smaller proportionally. The plumage on the back of a Cooper's head often bristles, giving it a squarish appearance, and his head is bigger proportionally. Moving from head to toe, the Sharpies have thinner legs, like chicken legs, though I usually find the thickness of the legs as problematic as the size comparison. Now, knowing how the tails or the legs or the size differ in each species is useful, of course. But putting it into practice can make you feel like you're trying to pick someone out of a crowd when all you have to go on is an old yearbook photo. A couple of the differences are specific to immatures or adults, and fortunately telling them apart is easy. The juveniles have yellow eyes and dark streaks on the front. Streaks are vertical. Barring is horizontal, and that's what the adults have. Orange barring and orange eyes. Now if it's an immature you're trying to identify, you might get a clue by looking at the eyes. A Sharpie has a white eyebrow. You won't see that on a Cooper's. This one has a little bit of white there, yeah, but it's not an eyebrow. Besides the eyebrow, note the thick reddish streaks on this Sharpie. His thicker streaks differentiate him from his opposite number, especially if they have a reddish tint, as they do in some lights. The Cooper's has brown streaking, which is finer than the Sharpie's, and it's sparse on the bottom third. Now, if you're looking at an adult, see if you can get a look at the back of the head and neck, because the Cooper's has a gray cap, while the gray on a Sharpie's head extends down the neck. Just remember, in adults, the coop has a cap. Probably the best indicator is one I'm not able to show you. I don't have the footage. It's the difference in the wing beats of each species. If you see one of them in flight, note its long, thin tail and short, broad wings, pay attention to how fast the wings beat. The Sharpie's flaps are fast, almost too fast to count. The Cooper's flaps are slower and easy to count. The bottom line is that it's almost as hard telling the two species apart as sorting out identical twins. On the bright side, even when you don't know which one you're seeing, you're bound to be awed by these fierce, alert birds. And you can take comfort in knowing that telling them apart will get easier, after you've tried it 10,000 times or so. Having learned something about the differences between the two species of hawks, you might want to go back now and watch the first movie again to see how many times you can identify which one of them you're seeing.